Die Sprachübertragung beginnt jetzt. Alle Teilnehmer befinden sich im Zuhörermodus. So, hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to a special webinar exclusively for JFD Brokers um, with the question how to trade the market opening of the US markets. So uh, currently we are in a very very special market environment. Let's let's call it special market environment. I think this that's that's definitely a fair way to put it. Um, so the Dow Jones yesterday with new all-time highs squeeze above 21,000 points. Um, right now stabilizing around 21,100 points. The question is, will we get to see a new all-time high or not? To be honest, I'd, I'd really like to see uh, one since uh, this increases the likelihood of. Um, a bearish divergence here and uh, something I mentioned already well um, here um, I'm, I'm uh, flipping through the uh, the um, risk disclaimer um, so while um, I found out or well my, my, my current um, performance my current performance is um, yeah, kind of, of break even. So I'm not seeing uh, big winners. I'm not seeing big losers too, or either. But um, it's it's not that that I'm that I'm getting uh, that I that I that I see a growing equity curve. And um, so the question is, um, what's the reason for that? And uh, so I analyzed my my trading journal. I, so I'm I'm having I'm 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 writing down all my trades. I'm having a very very detailed trading journal. And um, what I found out is that the payoff ratio, this is the um, ratio between the average winner and the average loser, that this uh, payoff ratio here is, um, is, is way below what I, what I usually um, see here for quite a while, so over years. And um, this means my average winner usually is three times as big as the average loser. And right now, it's above one but it's still um, below two, so it's something around 1.5 to one, which is uh, yeah, which is not really good to be honest. So, and uh, this shows to me that that um, somehow I'm con kind of um, having difficulties to to let my winners run. Now the thing is, I do not really have a problem to let my winners run since my um, um, exit management, for example is um yeah is 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 preset so if i enter a trade in this case i will show you how to how to, how i trade if i trade intraday moves um um how i usually manage my trades so you have to know what you're trading and if you like me um anticipating breaks out of significant ranges and then you try to participate um of a of a big intraday trend developing I'm working with a trend indicator, in this case the super trend indicator, um, in a special aggregation which fits my trading style best and then I, I am capable of, of managing um, uh, or of, of, letting, of letting winners run and earning several R's in this case. So if the initial risk is let's say, well, I don't know, 30 points, um, I do not have trouble to make on average something around 3 R here. Um, with my with my trading and thanks to my trading approach and my my exit management and then well if you find out that that this does not work anymore it has to do something obviously it has to do something with the current market conditions or with the fact and or with the fact that you are um, right now not looking for those big moves to come so or let's put it that way so um, the big, big big moves do not happen on the side you're trading so in this case here it is that um, I found out that if the payoff ratio is well below what I usually see well below three to one that has something to do with um, my trading style obviously not fitting the overall uh, market conditions here and um, so I decided to to take one two three steps back and have a general look at the charts and then I realized well probably you're just trading too small or no um, and in and, and a too um, uh, little the, the time from your trading is, is too 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 little it's it's too short I think too short is the best word here and um, so what I'm now right now looking at is um, or what I try to get to see is I, I want to see a mark the market here the Dow Jones moving up to to those highs here probably I'm um, squeezing a little above those highs and then definitely 
having trouble here to make higher highs in the in the 14 RSI here and resulting in a bearish divergence which then could lead to a very aggressive entry here with a tight stop and where I say well now I'd like to see a big bounce which is probably pushing us I don't know hopefully as down as 20,000 points or something and um, so what what I what I what I in this case do or what I ha hope for is that my um, intraday setup here I will I will um, 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 uh, draw for you here will then work out in this case. So what I present here in terms of intraday trading does not have anything to do with the swing trade I plan to position here um, on a higher time frame. So what I want to make sure first is that you understand that the strategy I present to you and how to trade the U.S. market open is a strategy which is working for well plenty of years now 30 years but it's not necessarily something for someone who wants to 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 trade uh, swing um, um, swings or something or, or or bigger moves so usually if you if you position yourself here with this strategy um, this what, what you what you will do is you open the trade shortly after they open so um, somewhere around um, 315 to 330 p.m. GMT and uh, the, then you will close the position at um, 21, uh, so 9, 9 p.m. GMT. So in this case, what I what I usually do here when trading the Dow Jones or the U.S. market, so you can do this not just on the Dow Jones, but you can trade this um, um, setup here for the S&P um, too. What I do is I, I uh, mark the, the, the spot market here. In this case, it's from 2.30 p.m. till uh, 9 p.m. GMT. That's when the uh, Wall Street is, is open. And uh, this is the, the um, market environment you position yourself in. Now, it, what you can see here is also the, the, the turquoise line. This is the uh, 2.30 p.m. market open, the spot open here. The blue line is the close from yesterday. And um, in green, oh, wait, the green line is here. So <laughs> the reason the green line is uh, that much... Uh, uh, where it hasn't been um, um, uh, seen on the on first glance here was that uh, yesterday we opened with a with a huge gap here and uh, didn't look back. So what you can see here is um, the market really just pushed higher. So you can see by the way this this uh, second line here it's here. So the market was steadily bit until it squeezed up to uh, the current all time highs here, and um, so. As you can see, obviously, we are hugely extended on the upside. But this is something we want to make a topic in a few minutes here. So first of all, this is um, that you understand what I'm doing here. What I have here is this is a called a breakout indicator. It's um, very, it's a great tool, a simple tool. Um, if you click on it, you can you can uh, easily uh, define your 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 um, um, period when it begins respectively when it ends here and as you can see it's uh, 230 till 315 so this is the the, the open range here and um, it is automatically automatically drawn into the chart and um, based on this on these two small black lines you're capable of formulating um, um, a trading setup which uh, worked already in the 18 so the the um, open range breakout scenario I will present to you here is something which was invented I think in the 80s um, thanks to Toby Crable so there was um, or there's also a book here which I do not know the title about but one second so we want to have a look here at Google and then we just need to type in Toby Crable okay so here this is this is Mr. Crable and it's day trading with short-term price patterns and opening uh, range. And uh, this book, by the way, I'm not sure if it's available. No. So here you can see uh, it's um, it's not that cheap. <laughs> it's not that cheap here. So you're paying up to 1,000 euros for this book. It's uh, it's a classic. It's a really classic. And um, so the strategy he presents in there is uh, is in fact this strategy here so the open range breakout you might have heard about this you can you can um, you can easily adapt this to the FX markets but what we will do is we will use it here for the Dow Jones since it's a very easy way to formulate um, um, trading scenarios based on that and um, nevertheless I 
I could imagine, or usually it's, it's the case, that you can easily automate the strategy, but I wouldn't automate it, but I have a discretionary touch here in this, in this strategy, and this is exactly what I want to present to you. So I prepared something, oh, by the way, I just closed it, that's not good. So here, one second. So I presented, or I prepared something. Um, so how to trade the market opening of the US markets, and then you can, let's go here, let's do this. Um, here's the definition of the open range uh, setup. You can identify the advantage, or this is the first thing you have to do, okay? You have to identify the advantage. So um, what you have usually to do when trading, you have to understand it's a zero-sum game. It's like roulette, or blackjack, or poker, okay? So it's, it's, it's a game, it's a zero-sum game, which means, Someone wins, somebody loses. And at the end, you have to make sure that on average, you are the winner. Or if you, you, at the end, you are the winner. That's all it is about. And uh, in a zero-sum game, you can, you can um, if you have an advantage uh, here, you can uh, make a, product, a profit out of someone. So um, therefore, simple, simple um, idea. Let's uh, take a, a coin toss, okay? So you have hat and you have tails. So heads and tails. And then um, we say, okay, the payout is uh, two euros once uh, there is hats and one euro, which is tails. Um, so I get two euros from you if it's hats. You get one euro from me if it's tails. Um, do you think this is a, a good bet if you, if you take this bet? Um, no, it's not. Why it's not? Well, since the uh, probability of um, hitting heads is 50%, well, it's 50% also for hitting tails. But I get every time heads um, um, hits here, I'll get two euros from you and you'll just get one euro from me. So in this case, this is exactly what you have to do here. So first of all, you have to have a positive payoff and or you have better hit rate. Which means um, the moment, let's say, we manipulate the coin and I have a, um, I have, um, a chance of, of hitting hats here for 70%, while you just have a chance of, of uh, hitting um, tails 30% of the time, well, it's okay if, if the payout is uh, 1 euro for you if uh, it's tails and 1 euro for me if it's hats, since uh, on average I will hit more often hats then you will hit tail since we manipulated the, the, the coin here so that in 70% of the cases, we'll, I'll, had, um, I'll, I'll hit um, hats, okay? So this is exactly what you need to do in trading. So you can easily adapt this thought here to the markets. So identify the advantage, okay? So let's say if you have an uptrend, usually you should go with this trend and trade in direction of the trend. Um, second is, uh, if there's a downtrend, well, you go with the downtrend. So, which means you, you prefer short scenarios. That's, that's the easy one, okay? So now, it's the question, um, how do you identify the, the advantage? And this is something I wrote down here already. So, based on Dow theory, very rough, or via a 205-minute um, SMA. In this case, what you could do here, and therefore, let's bring in here the indicator, very, very. This is very rough. Okay, this is really rough, but it's um, it's easy, and as you may have heard in trading, keep it simple, stupid. So I'm not saying this works all the time, but it's a good idea to get. You have a good idea of where is the advantage. So this purple line here now is the is the um, is the uh, um, um, 200 minute. So, so well. It's it's the uh, it's the it's the uh, simple moving average for the last 1,000 trading minutes. So if you have five minute time frame, and then you multiply it by 200, it's 1,000 minutes. So it's the average uh, average uh, simple moving average here based on the last 1,000 trading minutes. Um, simple one: if you trade above this simple moving average here, 200 SMA. If you trade above this, you just trade the long side. If you trade below that, you just trade the short side. That's it. Um, this is how you could identify um, the the. Um, um, this is how you could identify the overall advantage in a very very simple manner. Um, nevertheless, if you now see something like this happening here, that the market and this is where we opened yesterday, uh, that the market opened significantly above this 200 um, SMA here, you might say, well, 
to be honest, it is highly likely that the market will sooner rather than later correct here. And um, I want to avoid to position myself on the long side and then being caught on the wrong side of the trade. So this is definitely something you want to avoid here. Um, you won't avoid it all the time, but nevertheless, there are some ideas you can bring up here how to how to avoid this. For example, you could say um, with this trend filter in this case, I say, well, if we trade in this case here, I don't know how many points above this, 200 points above the simple moving average, I won't trade the long side. The problem yesterday was the market hit the, the uh, take profit, the potential take profit level here on the upside. Um, but this happens in this case. So if you have this trending filter and you find out that more than, um, I don't know how many percent um, of the times you, you, you are caught on the wrong side of the trade, well, it could make sense here. So this is like you say um, in, in winter, for example. So just imagine the following. You have a business. You run a business, and the business um, is you're selling uh, ice cream, okay? So now imagine you're doing this during uh, the summer vacation in front of a school. Uh, no, okay, summer vacation in front of school is as bad since the school is closed. But just imagine uh, during the school is open, respectively, during summer um, you're, you're running an, an ice cream business. So usually we'll make money out of this. You don't need to be really um, intelligent for that. Everyone can sell ice cream during summer. If you have the right concept here, if you have something special to offer and everything, well, you will run a re really, really profitable business. But now imagine it, it's just, let's say, three, four months uh, a year where you can sell ice cream. But um, during or from October, November onwards, you will get a lot of trouble selling ice cream. So now imagine the following. You could run this business over, over the winter, autumn, winter, and try to sell um, ice cream and, and, and really try hard to make some money out of this. And then there's one day or two days. Let's say it's two days. Um, two days there where there's um, sun, the sun is coming out and then you have kind of, of, of warm weather and people say, oh, well, I'd really like to have an ice cream. And then they see you and you can sell your ice cream. But do you really think it's worth it to um, open to or to be open all autumn and, and 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 winter long with your ice cream business? Do you really think you will make money out of this? Not necessarily, right? And this is exactly what you will uh, bring in with a trading filter here. So you could say, okay, right here, this is like like um, in this case, this is this. You have to think the other way around. But um, just imagine, there you say, well, if the market is so extended here on the upside, well, probably it doesn't make sense to go long anymore since we are really, really extended here. So this is like you have not just summer here, but now it starts to to. Well, this is this is the last um, 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 sun you will see here somewhere in October, and then we'll say, well. We've run quite much here on the upside already, so it's very um, um, late in summer. So probably, probably rather sooner than later, um, the atmosphere will turn here in summer. Um, yeah, well, there will be no summer anymore, and I won't say sell any any ice cream anymore. And that's um, a filter you can build in your trading strategy here. You can build into the this strategy where you could say, okay, even though we're trading above this um, simple moving average here, I'm not trading any long engagements anymore. Um, so what's today? Where's the, where's the, where's the um, overall um, advantage here? Well, to be honest, I don't think the advantage is anywhere, but it's somewhere it's neutral. It's really, it's neutral. Um, since we're trading around this, so it's not necessarily long, but it's also not, not necessarily short. Um, even though you could say, well, the moment we break below this open range, below the intraday lows here, um, well, we could say then the advantage is definitely on the short side. Probably it's worth to give um, short engagements a try. Um, so this is this is how you could use the 200 SMA here as a trading filter to identify the overall advantage, and that's what what we what we wanted to find out. There's one problem with this uh, with this with this uh, very rough way of identifying um, um, the advantage, and the problem is that in case of the Dow Jones, um, we have a, um, a market which is open nearly 24/7, 24/5, uh, not 24/7, but 24/5. This means that we have the Globex open here, um, not just between 3:30 and 9, um, or, or 2:30. 
and 9 p.m. GMT, but it's also open, and this is something you can see here. One second. So here the market closed yesterday, so that was the close, and then it reopens. It reopens at, so some, you can see it here, so you have to carefully watch what happens. So it closes at 10, or in this case 9.15, this is the last candle here, 9.15 p.m. GMT, and it reopens 15 minutes later, and from there tra starting trading starts again, and then you can see here there's another break between um, between uh, 10 and 11 p.m. GMT. There's another gap. So, and during this time span, the market is closed, but every other minute, the market is open. The problem with that is that you won't get to see big moves here during those trading hours, and on a five-minute time frame, this will result usually in the uh, 200 SMA to to um, yeah to to bring out or to 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 show you a neutral bias, um, while overall there might be in a in a higher time frame, let's say in the hourly chart or something, there might be a clear advantage which could be seen. In this case here, the hourly, for example, shows we are clearly bullish above uh, this this market, even though we get to see here a huge extension on the upside thanks to the price action from yesterday. So this is this is somehow a problem here with this technique. You can do this technique. Um, if you if you're trading a market like like the DAX for example, where you have clear trading hours, the FDAX is open from at the Eurex, it's open from from seven till nine, so seven a.m. GMT till uh, nine p.m. GMT every day, and so you won't have any trading overnight, which means you can have a good idea of uh, of the of the uh, moving average here. If um, yeah, if you if you if you're trading a DAX for example with this strategy. Um, while the Dow Jones or the S&P, thanks to their overnight trading, it's very difficult to trade them here. Um, so there's then another chance to identify uh, an advantage, and this is an advantage is based on the uh, Dow theory. And um, so the Dow theory in this case, and it's a very, very rough way to identify the, um, the overall advantage, but it's nevertheless working quite well, is all you do is, in case of seeing the structure like this, higher highs and higher lows, you say, okay, obviously it's an uptrend, so the strategy um, um, says just trade the long side. Same thing for the for the short side, falling highs, falling lows, boom, you see, okay, very easy here. You just uh, you just trade the you just trade the 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 the, uh, the short side, so um, that's an easy way to 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 trade or to 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 identify um, um, the advantage from from a Dow perspective. So in this case, it's more discretionary. And in this case, if you then zoom into the chart, you say, okay, obviously the market is here making higher highs, higher lows. Obviously, it's an uptrend. Obviously, we should trade the long side. Nevertheless, it's a huge extension here, for example, on the long side. So do you really want to trade the long side here in this market environment right now or favor um, long engagements? Um, that's a question we will answer shortly after um, the other two points here in case of definition of the, of the, of the open range setup. Um, you define the open range then between 2.30 and 3.30 p.m. GMT. So this is something you can easily do automatically. In this case, you will do this. You can easily do this with those two black lines here. You can automate this with an, with an expert advisor. And um, then on top of that, um, you will just here trade the break of the open range in direction of the identified advantage. The stop above or below the high and low of the range. Take profit, this depends. So um, this is something we won't cover today, but um, it depends. There, there, there are two ways of, 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 of trading the open range. One is you just duplicate the um, width of the, of the range, which means you say, okay, right here we have the low at 21,082. Uh, 21,082, yes. And uh, the high is 21,122. So the open range overall is 40 points. And then you trade the break in uh, the direction of the, of the open range. And then you say, well, um, if you know for sure, and if you have seen this and checked this out for several times, um, for, for, for quite a while, let's say, 
um, that you have a hit rate which is better than 50%, you can go for for um, a risk reward of one to one. You just duplicate this this um, you duplicate this uh, um, range here. In this case, the 40 points, and then you say if the break is on the downside and you identify the advantage on the downside, you say, okay, I have my take profit at 21,042, so 40 points from the lows, or if you have the advantage on the long side, you say it's 21,122, on the upside, it's 21,162, so here, this is one on, and, and one. The second thing is, if you have a strong trend, um, then you could also have another exit um, um, uh, scenario here, one I favor, um, based on the super trend indicator where you say, okay, now I expect the market to develop a strong intraday trend based on the identified advantage here, and then I go with the super trend indicator. So uh, in this case, what you do is, I show you how this looks like. So you go to the indicator. So this is, and by the way, it's not a standard indicator. But it's a custom indicator. You have to um, implement it. You have to implement it here. Uh, yourself and then what you see for example is in a strong trend something which developed here obviously already overnight but you can see what what I'm talking about so if a strong trend develops then you're not having to take profit but you let your profit run and rather sooner than later get stopped out once the market um, is exhausted on the upside or on the downside depends if you're trading long or the short side um, and uh, therefore nevertheless obviously it's uh, one thing to say, okay, it's very easy to identify higher highs and higher lows here in my trading, or lower lows and lower highs, but it's, uh, it's a complete different thing to, to really understand what's happening. So where do we trade right now? Is it an accumulation phase or is it a distribution phase we're trading in? Um, do I have a chance to get to see a strong trend? So this is where where the fine tuning comes in. So probably bringing in some indicators, showing you how big is the average trading range of the last, well, I don't know, two weeks or something. Depends on on uh, on the time frame you're trading here. Um, all these things, so indicators showing you. This, by the way, I'm very interesting now with the break on the downside. So. Um, Let's let's see whether whether this is probably a sustainable move here. It could could accelerate on the downside, by the way. Um, nevertheless, I'm I'm not willing to to trade any any uh, any shorts here right now. But uh, this this could get really interesting since uh, yeah the first target is by the way twenty one thousand and forty two here. So uh, that's that's uh, the first target. By the way, a target I'd go for in the current market environment. Um, if I trade the, the Dow from the short side now, since, for example, we have a very strong uptrend here. So it's probably not the best idea to, uh, to short the market here and now to, to bet on a big and huge reversal. But what happened several times in the, in the last uh, uh, weeks is that the market dropped and um, made some points on the downside and then reversed strongly into the, into the close of the trading day and started um, making new highs even this and then and probably stopped you out break even if you had your stop already uh, placed on break even. And um, so that's one of the reasons I, I would work right now with a take profit on the downside. So it's not that I just say, okay, I have, for example, higher highs, higher lows. Now we're in the region where the market looks hugely extended on the upside, that's why I'm going short. And then from here, I'm saying now I bet on the big reversal and a big downtrend to developing, but I first of all wait for the market then to push lower, work with the take profit, look how the market develops, and if it then really wants to break the trend structure, in the um, dominating time frame, me dominating time frame. So I'm trading the five minute time frame, so I'm looking at the one hour chart here. If it's then breaking the trend there, then we could start to think about trading bigger trends developing from there. But um, first of all, I'd work with, with a take profit here. So that's something where you might say, okay, um, what he just did here with, with higher highs, higher lows, lower lows, higher high, um, lower lows, lower highs, um, this is really, really rough. Um, this is something where some detail work might come in here and um, which could also be easily um, um, extended by trend indicators and everything. You can build yourself where you say, okay, this is the average range or whatever indicator you might use here. Um, but something, something which is definitely uh, worth to consider and where much more detail might come in as, it, as it's uh, a topic here 
when you're just using this uh, 205 minute um, SMA. So, okay, so that's, um, that's the definition of the open range breakout setup. That's something we will do in, uh, in, a, in a practical example shortly afterwards here. And um, this is something with discretionary touch here um, where you might now say, well, what, what is he talking about? So this is obviously a German um, chart here. This is um, 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 a picture from my um, educational course. So I'm offering, as a trading coach, I'm also offering online trading coachings here. And uh, this, is, this is a chart from there. So you might wonder why this is uh, German. Um, just to, to make sure that, that there's no um, a misinterpretation of this. So the red one here, this, is, this says Wirkungsbereich. It's something like it's a distribution area. Okay, so something we will uh, talk about here. And uh, this here in green, this is the Ursache Bereich. This is the accumulation area. Um, and uh, so what I'm also writing here is that building a position into the distribution area is something which is kind of not optimal. Okay, suboptimal in this case, um, something you want to avoid. So going aggressively long is something you want to do somewhere here in this green um, area while you want to start selling and when a market hits new highs from there. So not saying that I try to fade um, um, the momentum here, but the more the market moves here after hitting new highs, um, the more unattractive it gets to go long here. Okay, the same thing on the short side, by the way. And uh, that's where the discretionary touch comes into play. So first of all, the question, how to find the advantage? First of all, look at the dominating time frame of your traded time frame. So if we're trading the five minute time frame, then we look at the one hour chart in this case. Um, and then look at where we trade. Um, in this case, do we trade in the accumulation area or do we trade in the distribution area? If we trade in the accumulation area, then we trade aggressively in direction of the trend. So if we trade the open range breakout, we trade it aggressively in direction of the trend, so in direction of the identified advantage. If we're trading in the distribution area, it depends, but anti-cyclical setups will be considered. So which means, or which perfectly makes sense now, what I'm talking about here. So if we look at the hourly chart here, you might, oh, I'm sorry, this is the four hour chart. If we look at the hourly chart. So what you see is a market making higher highs and higher lows, obviously. So now, what would you say? Do we trade in, in the uh, um, um, accumulation area or do we trade here? Do we trade in the distribution area? I'd say it's quite obvious that, that we are obviously trading in the distribution area, right? So this is, exactly here where it's the red, the red um, um, area. So you see higher highs and higher lows. Obviously the market moves from the um, um, left corner here up to the right corner, um, which means we're going up. This means there's obviously momentum on the upside. So the advantage is on the long side, but the market um, squeezed aggressively here two new all-time highs, extended this move massively, and is obviously now trading in a region where we consider anti-cyclical um, short engagements and not trading into the direction of the trend. We consider it. I'm not saying we are trading it. We are considering it. Um, if, for example, you identify something like this here, so higher highs and higher lows, the market is coming down a little before um, the, the U.S. market opens. This is somewhere here or somewhere here. So if you see something like this, obviously we are in an uptrend and we are trending in the region of formal highs here while not um, breaking this upside structure. Okay, so the, the, the trend is broken once this happens. So if the market not just starts to correct here, probably pushes below this level, it's an interruption of the trend, but it's not yet broken. But if the market now starts to do the following, a sequence of falling highs and falling lows, this is the moment when this trend structure is broken. So you have to always look at the last relative low in case of an uptrend, or you have to look at the last relative high here um, in case of a downtrend. And as long as the market does not break this formal relative low, the, the, the overall advantage is on the long side. So something you definitely can see here, um, you can see the market is obviously trending upwards and it's obviously not breaking the former 
relative low here in this case. So it comes down and now we see, okay, as long as we trade above this relative low here, we should consider going long. Um, while or aggressively, probably aggressively going long. While here, in this case now, we are obviously trading in a region where we consider the market to be in a distribution area. So it's not the accumulation area, but it's definitely a distribution area. It's, uh, it's uh, um, uh, an environment where going long is, from a risk-reward perspective, aggressive. Okay, so it's probably more likely that the market will start to correct since the demand naturally diminishes here. At same thing, if we, if we um, um, see a huge extension on the downside, you might wonder um, how long you should go back. So if we trade this on a time frame, on an intraday time frame, probably it makes sense to go back, let's say, one week. Probably, probably two, but this is, this is by, by far um, the most aggressive approach here. So you probably should just go back about one week, look where the momentum is in, uh, where, the, where the momentum um, is, 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 can, be, can be found here. And uh, you shouldn't go back for, I don't know, two months or something if you're, if you're trading on a five-minute time frame and on an intraday um, basis here. This, 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 really, this definitely does make sense in my personal opinion. And um, so obviously the market is now trading here. Um, in a distribution area and now what we will do what we will do is after we obviously found out that here this is um, more likely that there that the market will start to correct some of its move here um, we'll say okay let's see it depends means we're considering anticyclical setups if we trade in a distribution area and we are ahead of, let's say, a strong resist here, which, when it's broken, could result in a bigger slippage, so or a bigger, uh, a big move on the upside. So, like I show you the following. Um, not sure if I find an example, but yeah, I mean, let's let's take this one. I mean, I know what I, um, um, why I, why I want to consider this, um, since I know that I traded the break here. Um, on the upside. I made a small profit trading the break of the 20,000 in the Dow Jones. Um, so in this case here, we were obviously trading quite high, let's say, okay? So we've seen the election here of Trump, the market explodes on the upside, then we start to consolidate here, and um, obviously we are trading, we are trading here um, in a region where rather sooner than later, especially if you look at the daily chart in this case, where rather sooner than later you might say, well, there will be probably a bigger pullback happening, okay? If it, it didn't happen, so all in all, the market's obviously pushing higher and higher and even higher. But um, nevertheless, when we traded here, that was exactly what we were thinking. On the other hand, we said, well, the 20,000, um, this is a round number. It's a psycho psychological, very interesting level here. So if the market breaks above this, there's a chance that there's some kind of squeeze pushing us up 100, 200 points. Well, what I didn't know back then was that I just had to stay long here, um, reduce the position size, put the stop here, and just wait. And now, um, well, prepare myself for, for a nice vacation here. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't know that before. But um, what, what I want to say is, if you have such a clear number here, a significant resist on the upside, and then the market starts in this case, now let's go back to the hourly chart, and then the market trades in the region of those significant highs, in this case here. So pushing higher, and here you can see the market started really to, to, to go aggressively against this level, and you see an extension here. So you see the extension, and you might say, well, um, first of all, all in all, it's a trading range, and then you consider the market here to be quite extended. Nevertheless, you consider you still consider long engagements attractive since you're trading here uh, shortly before the, the 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 very interesting and psychological relevant level around twenty thousand points. So what you see or what you do probably is you say, well. I could expect, or I should expect, a squeeze on the upside. Remember, we are not expecting from here a move of 1,000 points and holding the position for weeks or something. We're trading an intraday time frame. So we're trading a five-minute time frame, and we open the market, we open the uh, the trade at somewhere here between 2:30 and and 3:15 p.m. GMT, and we'll close it 21 p.m. Uh, at 21 p.m., I'm, I'm at 9 p.m. GMT. So this is when we close the market. 
uh, when we close the trade okay and um, so this is exactly what you what you want to see then you want to see a break above this level somehow seeing a squeeze probably a market stabilizing a little and then squeezing into the evening that's that's what you want to see something which is perfectly worked out yesterday so this is exact this is the perfect picture of what you want to see then okay if you traded it or not that doesn't matter in this case but what you want to see is exactly that you want to squeeze you want to see a squeeze here and this is something by the way it's not necessarily sad that you need to have a round number or a strong resist or a strong support here which is uh, then uh, broken but you could also work with the current market sentiment like you say well the market is expecting after Trump on Tuesday expecting um, coming down right so that was that was what everyone was expecting if Trump does not deliver you expect the market to come down if the market does not come down it's a clear sign of the market participants if the market especially reaches new highs will see some squeeze on the upside thanks to um, buying coming in from people who started selling before Trump and need to buy back now, getting squeezed out of positions, probably um, I'm getting euphoric and saying, well, the market doesn't come down. Okay, now we are reaching new all-time highs very soon and that's why we need to buy. And then you see um, um, huge demand here, no supply, market squeezing up. So sometimes you just need to, to think logically if you want. And, 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 and then to, to understand such moves. If they make sense or not, doesn't matter. So the market does not know in this case that it's trading here um, at a level where usually you say, well, we are hugely extended. The RSI is saying, well, this is massively overbought. So usually you do not expect here um, the market to, to reach new highs quite soon. And that's something which is completely irrelevant to the market. It just moves the way it moves. And the moment the demand is higher than the supply, well, it goes up. That's easy. Okay. Um, and so, so what I what I try to say is here. Um, this is what I mean with depends. If we're trading in a distribution area, and we have the potential of seeing such a squeeze on the upside. Well, you might wait for um, the market, how it develops. And if there's no trigger on the downside, and if the, if the level is relevant enough, if the sentiment is strong enough in your favor, well, then you probably should, uh, should go with the advantage and trade the market on the long side. Here, in this case, the anticyclical setup comes into play once there is no such sentiment, no such driver, no such resist, no such support or something, where you say, well, I consider the likelihood of the market moving against the trend, against the advantage, more likely than I consider it to move in favor or, or in the direction of the identified trend. And um, so I think this is exactly where we trade today, where we are today to, to have a current um, 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 example here. So this is exactly, I think, where we, where we are right now. So we see the huge extension on the upside. I consider this to be the distribution area here and where I say, well, I am not really willing to go long here in this market environment but I try to to probably build some some anticyclical shorts here and then you say the following so you identify the open range and then say you say you sell the break of those lows here um, in this case you sell 21,082 by the way I will just bring up an editor here and show what I'm talking about so Dow Jones so you're going short no, what we do is the following. We make something more, uh, something better here. It's more detailed. So first of all, we identify the advantage. Okay, identify the advantage. What's the advantage? We said, well, this is currently we are trading in the distribution area. Dow hugely extended on the upside. Side, so one second. Um, we know, let's say, squeeze potential level inside, um, and sentiment starts to become extreme. In this case, meaning. meaning diminishing diminishing the chances of a short squeeze okay 
So in this case, um, what, I'm, what I'm talking about is uh, you, you have the feeling, you get the feeling people throw in the towel. So they, they just give up on, on trying to, to, to fade the momentum here. And this is something, by the way, you could have seen yesterday too, if you, if you look at this here. Um, such moves, they somehow show that obviously um, people are getting squeezed out, squeezed out of positions, squeezed out of shorts. Um, getting margin calls. This is this is what you see if the market starts to really extend and go parabolic here. This is usually um, what's happening behind the scenes. So people really getting squeezed out of such positions here. And um, so this is something where I say, well, now the squeeze potential is somehow diminishing here. And now you do the following. You define the open range between 10th, uh, 2.30 second you define the open range in this interval and you have it between 20,000 and 82 and 20,122. So this is done automatically thanks to this open range breakout indicator. Okay, so here, these two black lines, there you have it. And by the way, I take out the super trend here since it doesn't help us right now. So here, those two lines, it's 82 and, okay, it's 23. It's 23. Okay, so, and now you say, okay, based on that, by the way, I have to fill in here advantage on the short side. And there you say, okay, well, I have the advantage on the open rate, uh, on the short side, and then you do the following. You define the trading setup. I trade the break of the open range in direction of the identified advantage, which is short, stop above, respectively below the high low of the range, and that's it. So what I do is here, I formulate the entry short. It's 20,082. You say, I say the stop is above the high of this identified range, which is 143. So you have a risk of, in this case, 41 points. And then you go for the target. And in this case, the target is, in this case, the target is 41 points from here. This is, in this case, 21,000, 21,000. And um, 41, 41, <laughs> right? Um, so, and this is the chance here. Now, the thing is, as already said, as already mentioned, be careful. You have to have what, what you should do before trading this. Um, you have to make sure that you have kind of, of, of back test um, running here, showing you that the hit rate is definitely above 50%. If it's not, you're not going to be profitable with this, since the expected value here, the expected value, this is EV, is the average average winner multiplied with the hit rate, and you subtract the average loser, sorry, average loser with the loss rate. And as you can see here, the moment you have an average winner of one, in this case 41 points, two 41 points, the risk reward is one to one. Um, you have one, you multiply it with the hit rate. I'm sorry, uh, in one multiply it with why? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, and you have it here, and you subtract here the average loser which is one, you multiply it with the loss rate, you see the loss rate plus the hit rate has, uh, where it sums up to, to 100%, uh, percent, okay? So which means if you have a hit rate of 55%, the loss rate is obviously 45%, which means you're profitable. Since it's then 0 0.55, you subtract 0 0.45, you have 0 0.1, um, which is bigger zero, which means you're profitable with your trading. The moment the expected value drops below zero means you're not profitable with the trading anymore. Um, so this is something you have to make sure. So 
if you're working with this aggregation here, with a um, risk reward of one to one, the hit rate has to be, on average, long term, has to be bigger than 50%. There are several chances to, to somehow optimize this. Um, we won't go into much details here since the um, end of the event is near right now, so it's five minutes. I'm, I'm really surprised. I haven't thought that this um, uh, will take more than 30 minutes, and now I'm talking around one hour already. Um, and so, unfortunately, we, won't, we cannot go into any details, but once a month we will have an event here, and if you're interested in more details, then uh, just shoot me a mail or something. Contact me via Twitter. I can easily um, um, set up something and probably uh, um, yeah, change something for the future events here. I will hold several of those of those um, 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 several of those 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 uh, webinars in the future for JFD exclusively for JFD, and then we will can make we we could make um, um, exit management a topic here. What you could do, what we could try, for example, is the following: you could say, well, I'm not working with a target here. But what I do, the moment the market reaches the target, is that you start to manage the trade with a super trend, but not on a five-minute time frame, but you start to manage it on a one-minute time frame. And, and, and the moment the market really starts to, to, uh, to, to, to take on momentum here and pushes significantly lower, then you really try to get as much out of the trade as possible and then this way, somehow, with a very aggressive stop management, um, you, you will have an average winner, which is probably on average bigger um, than one to one, which helps you in terms of the hit rate. So the moment the hit rate is not 50% or slightly below that, if you can somehow increase the risk reward of the trade to bigger one, that could result in the expected value of being profitable. As you can see, by the way, this is something really um, um, worth mentioning here, something I want to give um, um, you on, on the way and into the evening here to think about a little, is we are, trading about, we are talking about a pure day trading strategy. So we are talking about a strategy which you trade between, um, um, in this case here, 2.30 p.m. GMT and 9 p.m. GMT. So a trading strategy which is something you trade below eight hours. It's a pure intraday trading strategy. That's one of the reasons why the expected value starts to, to, um, to be quite small. But you have to remember, you're trading this five times a week. You're trading this um, in case of 20 trading days um, a, a month. You trade this 20 days a month, and you're trading this 200, 220 days a year. And uh, if you then manage to make, on average, um, let's say 10, 10, uh, um, 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 10 cents per risk euro here, per risk dollar, um, which is in case exactly what it says. If the expected value is 0 0.1, then it says that you're earning, on average, 10 cents per euro you risk, which means you're risking 1,000 euros, then you're making, on average, 100 euros per trade. If you do this 200 times a year, well, you can count it yourself, okay? So 200 times... Um, multiplied with 100, you're making 20,000. Um, if you're trading 100,000 euro account, risking 1,000 euros, 1% 1 per trade, you have a um, 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 return here of 20% per year. This is quite attractive. Um, but it takes time, obviously, okay? So you're trading every day. Every day is the same strategy. You have to look at it from a mental perspective. Do I really can, can, can handle this? If I just have a hit rate of 55, well, 50%, let's say, it's just 50% and, and you have a payoff of 1.5 to 1, um, can you handle having 10 trades, 20 trades a year, uh, 20 trades a month, and having just 10 winners and, 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 and 10 losers? Can you, can you afford this? Can you afford having five losers in a row, which could easily happen during, uh, where with this strategy? And this is something you have to remember when trading the strategy, but all in all, I think it's very, very attractive um, to, to consider it if you plan to trade on, a, um, 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 if you plan to, to, to day trade, the markets, if you want to play the, the Dow Jones, the S&P in the afternoon. And it, on the other hand, even though you might say, well, this strategy is, uh, is complete nonsense. I don't agree with them. I don't consider it to be profitable or something. It nevertheless perfectly shows how easy it could be. And I think this is something we will definitely agree on. This is something where you say, well, it's a clear plan. And it's a plan which is easy to understand. It's KISS. It's simple. Okay, it's, 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 it's 
easy, it's simple, and you can easily duplicate it every day again and again and again and again. And you have kind of a plan you're working through every day. And uh, I think most of the traders who fail do not have this plan. And this is something where we definitely will agree on, even though you might say, well, I do not uh, consider this strategy profitable or, and, or a strategy which could work. Well, I know it works since I'm trading this for quite a while now. Um, not necessarily on the Dow Jones, by the way, but on the DAX, but I know it will or it works on the Dow Jones too. But something, something worth to remember is have a clear plan. Have a clear plan on, on how to trade the market here. And um, if you have this, you can have three steps here. If you, if you do this um, every day, you identify the advantage, you define the open range, you have a clear setup, you have a clear exit management, well, that's all you can do, right? And the, the rest, it's, uh, it's what the market will do. If the market um, moves your direction, great. You now have to, to make sure that you get most as much as much out of a market as possible. If the market doesn't move your direction well, make sure that your losers are cut small, that that you, that you cut your losers short, um, and and then you'll see after half a year, let's say, if it works or if it doesn't work. But you have a clear plan, and then you can start. If you have the plan, you can start to 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 adapt here. You can start to to optimize, and um, so yeah, that's that's the last thing I want to say here during this this webinar. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if you have any questions, please shoot me a mail. So you can find my email address here. Um, if you do not want to contact me, but contact JFD Brokers, send an email to to a support at jfdbrokers.com. Referring to this webinar, um, I'm asking questions. I, I really look forward to to answer your questions um, if you have any. And uh, yeah, so have a nice evening. Um, I wish you all time happy trading. Watch your stops and talk to you again then next month with another topic. Not sure what will be the topic, but um, yeah, I will have definitely something uh, which is which is worth watching. <laughs> I hope I hope so. And uh, yeah, have a nice evening. So um, see you and bye bye.